My name is Tim Hyatt. I'm um, the oldest son of six who uh, together run Hyatt Honey. It's a business that makes honey and pollinates crops in California, Washington, and North Dakota. My dad and mom started the business in 1968. They were both school teachers and they decided they wanted something for their boys to do when there wasn't school. And so they moved up here, bought a small beekeeping business. And uh, we've had something to do ever since. So this hive, we were here just a few days ago and we saw that it, it had a bad queen. And so we killed the bad queen and uh, I'm coming back today to give it a, a new queen that we purchased. So our queen cage here has uh, sugar candy on one end and an open hole and it's plugged by the sugar candy. So the bees will consume this and in a couple days they'll release the queen and by then they should be accustomed to her scent, her pheromone mix, so that they'll accept her and then she'll be their new queen and start laying and build the population up. At least that's what we hope. The queens don't live as long as they used to anymore. They used to live three, four years. It was not uncommon. And uh, now people are reporting less than a year. We're seeing probably more than a year, but not much more. So for whatever reason, we have to maintain the bees all winter long just to keep them alive. And something has changed in the last 40 years or 45 years that my dad has been keeping the bee business and that we've been running it. Something in the environment. The bees themselves have changed. The worker bees aren't living as long as they used to. A few days, but out of a bee that lives three weeks in the summer or four weeks in the summer, a few days is a big difference. And that lack of longevity for the worker bees translates into the queen having to work a lot harder to keep the population up. She has to lay more eggs. And so she will age prematurely. We call it burnout. So both of those things decrease the longevity of the hive generally. Why that is, I'm sure pesticides have a role to play, the varroa mite and the viruses it transmits, uh, changes in ag practices, less things that are friendly to bees being planted by farmers now. Large scale noxious weed control has taken away a lot of the natural forage that bees and native pollinators rely on. So there's a lot of factors that contribute to the difficulties that honeybees face. It's been about uh, 10 days since the last rain we had here. But before that, it seemed like every other or every third day. Typically, that, the rain that you receive in May and June are what you're gonna get for the year. And so these scattered thunderstorms like we had last night, they can really save your crop if you happen to get one. Now, one of the yards we went to first, up by Bowman, got a lot of rain, looked like. Oh, really? Big puddles. North or south of town? West. West. It looks like a lot of the ones I'm putting queens in are pretty wimpy. Yeah. So. Right, and that's the other thing. I don't want to, I don't want to be too hard on them. I mean, because I pull a cage out and they're still pretty weak and I'm just, do I replace this queen again or? Do I... This was sweet clover last year. Yeah, that's what this, it looked like this last year and this, this to this year. <laughs> So the bees are weaker coming into the summer, and it's it's really late here too. I mean, we're only a week into pulling honey, and it's it's the 16th of July when we should have been pulling honey. We usually start right after the 4th of July pulling honey. In my experience, the climate has everything to do with bees' health, their vigor, the honey they produce, how well they pollinate. But it has more to do with that year's conditions. Uh, we've never seen years that were identical. The only consistency is that it's inconsistent. <laughs> you know, it, 
it could be hot, it could be cold. I mean, there's just so much, it's so much in flux. You can't really pin down saying it's, it's hotter, it's colder. I mean, every year, every year is different. As climate changes over time, whether it's one, a wet season, a dry season, whether the temperature gets hotter, or colder, we just need to be on top of the bees. And so I, I see the beekeepers today are more aware of climate than they've ever been. Some of the best hives in, the, in decades ago were managed by people who never looked at their hives. You could have a laissez-faire attitude, but not so anymore. But as you can see where, like right here, you had a hive that died, so the boxes are gone. The whole yard, like a million, 200,000 bees. So in the air, you're probably seeing probably 60,000, maybe. I haven't counted them yet, but <laughs> everybody does things differently. I mean, you know, and even within our company, I mean, every, every brother on his crew does things differently. It's just, you know, and, and sometimes you don't like that because it's like, yeah, I want it done my way. You know, the other brother says, no, don't do it that way, do it my way. <laughs> so it's, it's a challenge. I, I'm pretty easy going, I guess, but uh, some of the other brothers are a little more intense. <laughs> but, but everybody wants it their own way, and it's, it's kind of fun. Malita Wancho is Wongo La Caja, yeah? Está bien. Mira. At the end of the day, the guys are coming in with their honey. They left this morning and they had empty boxes on their truck and they've gone out and checked the bees, put in queens, pulled the honey. Now they're coming back and they're unloading. The honey that they're running now, they bring it right to our uncapper. The cap has to come off. This is what keeps the honey sealed up. And so this frame, okay, compromiso. When we lay it on the machine, it has metal cutters that'll cut it off Oh, you gotta turn the... Poco mas rapido. See, now, now the frame has, is all open and that honey's ready to flow out. They fill the machines and they start off really slow. As you can see, it's running. It's packed full of frames and it's just going slow, slow, nothing very fast. And then as the honey goes out, it'll, automatic, it'll automatically go faster, faster, and faster. On a good year with good honey, we can do 2,000 gallons a day, which is, which is good. So this honey is North Dakota clover. This is why we come all the way over here, to get the good clover honey. Yeah, the U.S. only produces about a third of what we eat, and so we import about two-thirds. So it just doesn't make sense to take much honey out of the country. We just have to bring more in. We used to do about half. About 15 years ago, we used to do about half the, the the need for honey in the U.S., but now there's not as many beekeepers. The bees, you know, their livelihood and their health has gone down. And so with the, not as many hives, we just don't produce enough honey. 